to this special show from the World Economic Forum in Davos, where every year top business leaders, policy makers, heads of state gather to get a check on the global economy. It's been quite an uphill task for the Indian ministers to hard sell India as an investment destination. Speaking to NDTV, Commerce Minister Anand Sharma reacted sharply to the Supreme Court's observations on FDI asking if it's a mere political gimmick. He said we should not confuse investors and that the separation of powers needs to be respected. Commerce Minister Anand Sharma is here in Davos, hard selling India's investment story. Mr. Sharma, there have been obviously some concerns. So while you're here in Davos, uh, uh, really trying to woo foreign investors back home, India's apex court, the Supreme Court, has actually questioned if the FDI and multi brand retail policy was a mere political gimmick. How would you respond to that? Well, I do not know in what context it was said. Executive policy decisions are serious decisions. And the constitutional demarcation is very clear what an executive domain is, what the legislature domain is, and what the domain of the judiciary is. It's important for all the three uh, to respect that separation of powers and not to transgress into the areas which do not belong to them. Is this a classic case of where you feel the, where the judiciary is I overstepping its boundary into, into the uh, executive into domain? into conflict with the judiciary, right. but that has to be borne in mind that it was an executive decision which is very much uh, within the ambit of an elected government in our parliamentary democracy. But it went beyond that. It went to a parliamentary debate and vote. Right. And both the houses of parliament, the government's decision has been endorsed, whether in Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. Okay. What is left after that right. is to implement. So and are you I surprised with like the Supreme Court's uh, reaction? Uh, well, you see, we should not send a message which confuses or demoralizes investors at a time when the Indian economy is going through a critical phase. And when such decisions are made, it was only in December that the parliament debated and voted. Right. Now you can't expect uh, uh, investment decisions which are serious uh, business uh, decisions or propositions to be made by investors will come in with hundreds of millions or billions of uh, dollars or pounds uh, to be taken in a jiffy in a day or two they take time and we have to uh, bear that in mind even uh, for the say IKEA the sing a single brand is a decision right it has taken months and months and months and finally there is absolute clarity and it has gone through right so it does not happen in a week's time for that matter even in <laughs> In the court's judgments are not given uh, instantly, they do take time. So the, the other point that has been raised, of course, by the Supreme Court is that have you seen real investments coming in and you're saying it is going to ta take time, you're confident... Investments are coming in, I'm not entering into a conflict with the Supreme Court. As I said, I do not know in what context this observation was right. made. But one thing, the separation of power under our constitution must be respected. Legislature and executive decisions which have been well uh, within their domain ought to be respected. Elected governments are uh, accountable. They are accountable to the parliament. They are accountable to the people. The sovereignty of the people is vested in the legislature. That's what I know as a minister of the republic. But the big question remains, is India's relevance on the global platform diminishing? In this panel discussion, delegates talked about how there is a need to have a credible India not necessarily incredible India and how it's important for the government to act quickly so that we don't miss the bus. A few years ago it was India everywhere here in Davos but over the last few years policy paralysis, slowdown in decision making, uh, a complete uh, knockdown of our overall growth rates uh, as well as concerns over corruption and a string of scams seem to have become the dominant worries with regard to the Indian economy. So is India's global relevance diminishing? That's our special panel discussion from here in Davos. Let me introduce our guests on the show today. We've got Sandeep Nayak, MD and Head India Operations of General Atlantic, uh, Nena Lal Kidwai, uh, Country Head HSBC India, and of course, Director HSBC Asia Pacific, and someone who's also wearing another hat these days as President of Fiki, and Mr. C.P. Gurnani, MD of uh, Tech Mahindra. Thank you all for being with us here on the show. Uh, Ms. Kidwai, let me start by asking you, has the India story taken a beating? Well, if you look at the fact that the delegation here is still the second largest, I believe, after the US. Right. And the fact that uh, I've been in sessions this morning, really, 
both in, of which, one was on the energy context where India's uh, increasing demand of energy, and as you well know, it's such a big part of our energy bill, uh, clearly is about India's relevance in the energy play. And the second one, which was really quite gratifying, which was to do about the evolving nature of business, where uh, Tata was mentioned as a, a responsible corporate player sure. by uh, a totally non-Indian panel. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app, fully optimized for retina display, full screen view, faster response time, and Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.